I thought I'd give a uh, quick update on the bike. Um, obviously, it's been probably about 24 hours now um, since all of this stuff's been going down. Uh, there's a police investigation going on. Um, if anybody is from Jersey watching and knows anything, please give the police a ring. Um, it's 01534 612 612, I think. Um, so there's a witness that was saying that they saw two men pushing a motorcycle and one man pushing two push bikes, which is a pretty suspect dynamic of vehicles there. Um, and uh, yeah, that was that was at 12.30 on Saturday night. Uh, this this Saturday just gone. So so we're Monday today. Yesterday was Sunday. The day before was was Saturday. Um, and then you know they we found obviously the ignition. They they'd kick the ignition off, and then you can see some of their hot wiring that they've done there. Um, they obviously got the bike started because the bike had only done five thousand and ninety or so miles, and then when I got it, it had done five thousand one hundred and something miles. So. They did definitely get it started, took it for a little spin. And then the this side fairing here, there's a small little white fairing um, that had a small toolkit in. And I found one of the spanners or wrench on the floor by the beach, as well as the ignition smashed up. I didn't find the fairing and I also didn't find the fuel cap. The fuel cap didn't come with the bike when it was recovered by the police out of the sea, which means that the burn from all of the you know you can see some of the remnants of it here i have actually taken off a lot of the the burnt stuff um but the the burnt plastic and the fact that it was set on fire must have been coordinated because why would they take off the petrol cap you know if they were gonna if if you were in the scenario that you had a bike operating on a beach and you've already been through the process of stealing it why not just have a really fun time zooming across the beach? You know, just going absolutely crazy, going as fast as you want across the beach. You know, you can turn the lights off and just, it's a very quiet bike. Why set it on fire? That part really, really, really confuses me. You know, setting it on fire is just the most confusing part to me. And I really don't think that I'm, well, I know that I'm not high profile enough from fixing Game Boys, you know, to to render deserving any of this. I don't believe it was something that was personal. I really like to think that it's not something that was personal because that makes me feel incredibly unsafe if they not only know where I live, but they're willing to set my bike on fire. So, yeah, it is a complete mystery. Um, luckily, being the, the weirdo that I am, I spend a lot of time on eBay and I actually found... For some reason, when I bought this bike, the suspension here was actually spray painted. You can actually see a little bit of the spray paint here. So this must have got quite, rust, quite rusty and they must have sanded it down and then spray painted it a silvery sort of chromey color you can see there to, um, to make it look a bit better. But luckily I found on eBay uh, last week actually, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, some replacement shocks, which are brown and they're in much better condition than this. So stuff like that, you know, fine. It's, 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 I've already got more of stuff like this, you know, this swing arm, this is going to have to be paint stripped and then painted again. Obviously that the crowdfunding raised 2,600 pounds. That was not set up by me. You know, I'd, I want to make sure that, um, people are aware that I didn't have any intention of crowdfunding. You know, I, I even removed my Patreon link from the video description. I didn't want to make it a video of like asking people for support um, because, you know, financially, this is something that I could just do over drips and drabs over the next year, you know, just looking out for parts on eBay, getting the swing arm done first, maybe that might cost a couple hundred quid, getting the frame done next, which might have cost maybe 500 quid or something, you know, just to, 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 to take my time and sort of just do it in bits, you know, so to, to receive 2,600 pounds is just incredibly overwhelming and that will be enough to get it sorted. One thing you've also, I've also got to mention as well is that living in the small island that I do live on, there's a lot of support locally. You know, I had messages from local paint shops, I had messages from local mechanics, all saying 
I'm willing to do this for free. I'm willing to do this for free. You know, in, in Jersey, where I live, the, the post got shared hundreds of times. The police have shared it on their Facebook page. I've just been with the newspapers today and, and the um, local news t television station and they all want to talk about it and and stuff. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Hopefully, the police are confident that maybe some of the CCTV that was on the exterior of buses, if there was any buses passing, um, there was also a potential CCTV on a private building down the road. So l hopefully we're going to find out who who it is. I think the chances are pretty slim. Um, I think what we the, the, the most we might get is a picture of two guys pushing a bike, which would be closure for me enough to know that maybe I'm not going to recognise them and that I'm going to feel like it was just a potential drunk act. But anyway, talking about specifically about the bike, it's the stuff like this, which is going to be hard to find. You know, this is the... Um, the, the seat um, sort of hinge and where the indicators go. This, you know, this was probably rusty anyway. I, I don't think the seawater would have helped, but this was probably rusty anyway. Um, but that is okay. You know, this, this can just be, it's not rusty to the point where it's extremely damaged. You know, this can be salvaged quite, quite easily. You know, a paint, a paint person might think that, getting it sandblasted and then repainted might just do the trick um stuff like this you know i i don't remember that being as oxidized as that i think that that has probably been a uh down to, the, to leaving it in the sea overnight you can see there's some sand and stuff down there and whatnot um that's a possibly a bit of a burn there there's no way is that a burn on a metal nut jesus um, so this is fine. You know, that can all be sandblasted again in terms of the condition of this bike. It was not mint condition. It was definitely extremely good for, for 1977, but it was not mint, but also it was original. You know, if given the choice, I would have rather have kept the bike like this than to sandblast it and, and powder coat it or spray paint it or paint strip it and spray paint it because then it's no longer original. And, you know, you've got really nice little stickers here from the manufacturer and there as well. Um, this survived really nicely. That did survive. You know, I might just weigh up keeping some of the parts, just to keep them how they were. All of this sort of stuff, electrical components, that's all going to have to be replaced. This is the battery holder covered in sand that can be all cleaned. This is one of the grips. These grips are impossible to find. There's some on eBay right now for £95, which is insane. A pair of grips should only cost about £10, but to get new old stock Honda ones is going to be very expensive. You can see it's covered in sand. Oh my God, that was all sand that just came out of there. So yeah, you can see there, It's that's probably, you know, it was probably lent on the handlebars underneath the sand as the tide was coming in. This is the scary part. This is the part that, you know, that's a bit of seaweed. This is the part that is is really crucial to get to as soon as possible, you know, because no amount of just spray painting the exterior is going to clean inside there. So hopefully some sort of maybe acid bath or something. All of this needs to all be taken off and replaced. Um, this swing arm is quite easy to come off. We've already taken off the rear wheel. We've already taken out the engine. A local mechanic offered to do all of the labor on the engine for free. So he's taken that engine away. Massive thank you to him. I'm not sure yet if this mudguard is going to be salvageable. You can see there is bowed slightly out here, but I think a magic eraser will actually do a good number on, on, on cleaning this up. I'm going to give that a really good go because preferably I would like to keep parts that are this substantial original to the bike. I thought I got away with this piece here under the handlebars, but unfortunately this part here is all burnt. So that is a shame. Um... The speedometer, which had the original mileage on it, that was waterlogged beyond belief, and they're pretty much impossible to, to work on obvious, for obvious reasons. They want people to wind the, the clock back and make it look like it's done less miles than it's, than it's actually done. Stuff like this, covered in sand. So I'm going to stop recording now because I need to carry on stripping it down, but just wanted to give a quick update and thank everyone for everything that they've done. 
you know, it's the support's been insanely overwhelming. I only had about two hours sleep yesterday. Um, so it's all really fresh to me. I don't think I've quite digested the fact that, you know, only a few days ago, this bike was brand new. So I'm not, I'm not sure how long that might take for it to sink in. But at the end of the day, it is only a bike. No one was hurt. It's only an item and items come and go in my life. You know, it's, it's just the way that the world works. So it's not the end of the world. It just for people who are aware and appreciative of vintage belongings, it does hurt pretty, pretty hard because these things aren't being made anymore. And put simply, they're, they're never going to be made anymore because that's what makes them vintage and that's what makes them, you know, desirable. But anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Oh, one thing I will show you because it's pretty shocking. This is the wheel, by the way, covered in sand and also inside the uh, drum. That's already rusted. You know, the way that these works are that there's sort of a... Um, two brake shoes that sort of, I think, push outwards against this. So that, hypothetically, should be immaculate because constantly it's getting rubbed. But yeah, salt water, not good. There you go, if I show you inside there. Essentially, that is not what you want inside your tank. So, not sure what I'm going to do with that. I think I'm going to have to try and find a new one. It's all burnt. It's not deformed. Annoyingly, there was a really nice sticker that was there, which was in really good condition, but that sticker's gone now. It's not deformed. I don't think it got that hot, but it's uh, it needs to be relined at the very least. You know, you can see the extent of the rust there, and that was not like that. <laughs> that was from, uh, from being left underwater overnight. Anyway, no one was hurt, and the bike is repairable in time. Thanks very much, everyone, for all of your support. I really, really, really appreciate it. Bye.